The characters of my film are often some doing things or talking in a way or behaving in a way that I can't allow myself to you know, feel or do. So in many ways, films also I or the safe space for your dreams and for all those little quirks. I'm not going to tell you all my secrets. <laughs> Hi, I'm Arman from Vice. Uh, I'm in Bombay and today I'm joined by Imtiaz Ali, the acclaimed writer, producer, director, artist, you know him, from movies such as Jab We Met, Rockstar, Tamasha and most recently, the Netflix series, She. Hi, Imtiaz. Hi, Arman. How have you been? Good and very happy to have the pleasure of coming back to Kayani. You moved to Bombay for your diploma, if I'm not wrong. At yes. Xavier. Yes. So was that the time that you would often come to like these small nooks and crannies and bakeries and everything? Not to all small nooks and crannies, but this particular nook I used to come to very often because um, where I first stayed in Bombay uh, is the most glamorous location I've ever had, which is St. Xavier's College Hostel, which is just around the corner, you know, opposite Metro. So this used to be where we would come if we had money for tea and for bun maska and if we had too much money then we'd have caramel custard as well and if there was like a downpour or a torrent of money then we would also have keema pav. You know, uh, I was just wondering that these places like Kiannis and all these old Parsi Rani cafes that in a way Bombay, particularly South Bombay is all dotted. It's like very very visual this place, you know. Yeah, Bombay is a very exotic city I feel. Just look at this chair, you know. It's a uh, Irani chair, it's heirloom. Thank God for the Iranis, the Parsis for retaining stuff, you know. They know how to maintain things. So they don't tear the building down and make a glass fronted, fully air conditioned uh, replica of uh, some other country. Uh, there's a lot of value that uh, gets retained because of the various communities that came into Bombay at various times of history. To what extent did the cityscape influence the visual style of your films? The big building, dark alley of South Bombay has had a huge influence on my visual style. And I'm very happy that in Shi I could get to explore that. Because apart from the sense of danger uh, in those lanes, apart from uh, the architecture, there is also a certain sense of like romance, you know, and exotism, uh, which I think became the basis of she, or at least the, the language of she. You have to go back to the this operation, this will task. How long were you in Bombay? So I think you were at, uh, I mean, of course you were born and raised in Jamshedpur in Jharkhand and then you went to Delhi um, and then of course you came to Bombay for your diploma at St. Xavier's. So, for, so was that it then Bombay became your home or yeah. would you keep shuttling back like? You know, I thought I'm maybe a Delhi type person and I'll settle down there. Fact of the matter is I found Delhi too hostile and arrogant and no Tell now I about love it. it. <laughs> <laughs> now I love it of course but at that time because I was ready to pick a fight with everybody, Bombay suited me more. And the good thing about Bombay that I loved right at the onset was the fact that you couldn't assess what's inside the envelope from the cover. You could have a multi-millionaire traveling with a, a small plastic bag in a local train and he could be a multi-millionaire and you don't know it, you know. And it's over here, the class system that I had seen in Delhi was far less. Perhaps it's the only big metropolitan city where I can live and work. So like your cinematic sensibilities are influenced by the chaos of Bombay, for lack of a better word. Also, yeah. I think my language is very influenced by Delhi. Okay. Um, I feel that the early influences of being in the cinema theatres in Jamshedpur has influenced me a lot about what cinema uh, would mean for people and therefore also for me. And I feel that when I watch my films, I realise that there is the small town, sometimes a village, definitely some travel. I mean, that's my story, so to speak. That's my life story. So it has to in some way reflect upon the films that I do. I feel even in let's say she, which is about a person, this girl Bhumi is born and brought up in Bombay and is in the police force, but still there's a sense of being an outsider to something. Not in a negative way, not in a way of being outcast, but just looking at the world from outside. It also comes from the fact that I am from Jamshedpur, 
which borders around a tribal area, you know. And you see that most people of the dominated class don't complain. You know, they take it, they accept it as grace of God or something. But some people object to it. Some people see through that facade. And I've always met these people who have been impertinent, you know. So yeah, I, I feel attracted to that concept of uh, of uh, people that look up at the higher classes with disdain. Kima Pao. Yes. The iconic. The only thing is that we used to get served in porcelain. Aajkal wo nahi dete kya? Kanch ka bartan nahi hai. Ab isme dete hain. Even this palonchi is coming with plastic. Oh nice. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to get some pictures yes, for please. my friends, okay? You can't even imagine how precious this is to us. Oh, how sweet. You were yearning for a sense of a better life always. A better life in every way possible. Survival, you know. Survival. Things were different at that time. I keep explaining right. to my daughter as well. And, and she understands it. The, you know, the rules of the game are different. The rules of survival are different. I feel a lot of gratitude towards Bombay because I think it's a very generous city. You're also unforgiving. Unforgiving, but what do you want forgiveness for? Like you've come over here to make a life, not So you to... knew what you signed up for. You know? Yeah, you're, you're looking to make a life, yeah. So you will want to do a job and get the money for it and survive and go to the next step and improve, yeah. Somehow, I feel that life and films finish the whole pie for me. You know, it's not necessary for me to say in my films what I'm already doing in my life. Right. Sometimes it could be that there's a reflection. At other times, it could also be that my aspirations come true through in the film. Right. The characters of my film are often some doing things or talking in a way or behaving in a way that I can't allow myself to right. uh, feel or do. So in many ways, films also are your, the safe space for your dreams and for all those little quirks. I'm not going to tell you all my secrets. <laughs> Some people say, well, uh, in your movies, the female character doesn't have much of an agency, that her life is revolving around the life of the male character. Uh, on the other hand, in the same breath, they also praise the fact that they are so determined and then they figure out their lives for themselves. I feel very fascinated by women for having been in a, in a role which is more repressed, more uh, disadvantaged than man, and yet having that smile and that grace on their faces, you know, being practical, being smarter at every measure than man. There's a story like Highway right. or, or She. This is about women finding their agency actually, right. right? So not every story can be about women finding their agency. Why am I not allowed to make some stories of a different nature or, or they, they mean something else? I'm here not to actually tell people how to live their lives at all. Like in Cocktail, you know, I, I was very fascinated by the fact that Western girls that I meet in London are much more eager to become like domiciled in that extremely traditional manner than the girls that I've met in India. But some might argue that's internalized patriarchy. Yeah, it might be. It could be. So here was a story of two girls, one of them having an extremely open-minded Western uh, upbringing and the other having a very traditional Indian upbringing, meeting in London and then actually going the other way. Filmmakers have always They've always taken turns to highlighting certain um, bits and pieces of India and but obviously your aspiration has been to highlight multiple Indias in a single film, right? If possible, yeah. I'd love which, that. With She, uh, have you, would, you, would you say you've necessarily done that? She's largely been in Bombay, about Bombay, but also Mumbai now after the change of name, but also about characters that might have come from different places. Right. Like even Maharashtrians are not all Mumbaikers, you know, right. they, are, they come from different places. But there's the character of Nayak that is definitely an outsider. She was not so much about diversity in India per se. It was more about that dark alley which is magnificent and romantic and dangerous all at the same time and the agency of women and what is uh, threatening or what is vulnerable actually can be the powerful weapon that you use. It was about all of that. Well, with that note, let's finish this segment. Now, let's see the dark, grimy corners of Bombay that you so like. Nayak 
मुंबई को इंडिया का ड्रग कैपिटल बनाने का प्लान कर वी नीड टू कैच हिम रेड हैंडेड एंड ऑल्सो सीज हिज ऑपरेशन एक शब्द अगर मुंह से निकल गया और किसी को पता चल गया तो सो इम्तियाज वे आर द आइकॉनिक हॉनमेन सर्कल एंड आई बिलीव दैट यू शॉट सर्टेन सीन्स ऑफ शी योर राइट योर यस यू टेल अस अबाउट दैट सो दिस वाज द स्ट्रिप वेयर द सेक्स वर्कर्स वुड सॉलिसिट and uh, bhumi being one of them bhumi is the prime character of she then you would see the traffic of the night looking at girls and this was this is perhaps the most important uh, and the most significant location for she there's a lot of drama i feel that in the life of a sex worker there is a lot of drama because you feel that there must have been a horrific story and there must have been a there must be also a dismal future that she's walking from one to the other at the same time there is a certain romance and enigma of her existence right now right here where people are actually willing to pay money as one of the dialogue uh, in the in the show says that i still get money you pay money for this job so of course there it's a very dramatic situation to be a sex worker and uh, there's no judgment but obviously this was a story that you've been holding inside for almost i don't know how many years for many years actually for many many years why is that why were you why was it like you know and all of those beautiful movies that you made there was this grim dark corner if i may wanting to be explored I don't know I mean I think I think that some of the stories that I uh, uh, have thought about have appeared in film before the others and obviously when you make a few films of a certain type then you acquire the reputation of being a certain type of filmmaker but uh, I also feel encouraged by the fact that she is being accepted and uh, having traction with the audience to discover more stuff that I have within and some corners inside me are also grimy and dark They are. like the ones that we are treading on now and this story i feel is a story of great um, importance somehow i felt that there was something very subtle very very dignified also uh, and also very feminine which is why i wanted to call this she i tried to make it as a film i wanted to conceive it as a film but uh, it could never really be as plot driven as it needed to be to be a good film you know and i and i always felt that this is more like a character study of sorts in the show i could discover the home uh, the office the various aspects of the world of bhumi at the same time things that are not so urgent uh, could also find uh, uh, a place over here you know like the lives of uh, sex workers that are not working anymore or that are not able to solicit men anymore and what they must do to find um a you know a basis for life but she also like, did you have to like necessarily go to these um these brothels is these these like kamatipura you have to necessarily go there do, do your research like did you find something interesting one of the first things i ever did on television was something called purush kshetra which is a talk show on men and the host uh, was kiran kheer and then later divya said So uh, in that we used to have topics that you would not discuss in your drawing room but you it would still interest you right so there were a lot of topics covered on sex workers and their lives and associated dangers and various other things you know things that you are interested in so things that i was interested in as a 21 year old i used to make topics off and do research off and then call people and many of them as i said was about sex workers and i got introduced to all these areas kamatipura congress house i i visited them not really because we i had to but because i wanted to as well to see how they live and how how these sex workers are different from other women and uh, uh, how these places are so a lot of uh, things that subconsciously flow from me into she is actually coming from my experience of living in bombay and being fascinated with prostitutes with brothels also doing shows on them regularly uh, so it's kind of sourcing itself from there so once i hit the concept i could i i knew that of course i'd have to go and do some primary res- research but there is enough background like it's a world i know perfect Thank you so much Intiaz uh, for talking for speaking with us for being so candid so open so Pleasure. effortless with your answers <laughs> and good luck, you. You. <laughs> good, you good luck with you good thank you good luck with you thank you so much